Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning some tricks that you can use to explore the Mistlands really early on. I'm not going to spoil the Mistlands or show you what's really there, you know? And it's really, really fun. Let's get to it. All you really need is a carve, just like this. And the main thing to keep in mind is what way the wind is going. Because all you really need to do is make sure that you're sailing in the direction of the wind, more or less, and then you'll be able to outrun whatever you may or may not find in the Mistlands. You can't always see it this easily, but that's the easiest way to tell that it's Mistlands. There's also these trees. The Mistlands themselves are some of the most beautiful terrain that Valheim generates, and it seems to be designed to sail around it with a boat. Most uh, Valheim players don't actually get to the Mistlands. And I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just that the Mistlands is like so far into the game at this point, most players, especially groups of players, are gonna stop playing way before the Mistlands are a problem. So that's why I encourage you to explore it before even if you die like don't don't take your stuff with you don't think you can go there and fight just get in a boat get some really basic gear and then just go see what it's like go give it a shot you know it's pretty cool there are some tricks that you can use with the mist so as you can see here you can actually look under it and this creates an interesting effect where if you tilt the camera backwards you can see the terrain of what's in front of you Whereas if you tilt the camera upwards like this, the mist totally covers everything around you. So it's a good habit to sort of try and look under the mist if you're in the water, because then you'll be able to see the terrain. It's by no means easy though. You still will struggle and you'll still often crash. You should assume if you sail into the mist, you're going to crash. Now there's some other tricks with the mist that people don't realize. For example, if I go up here, right? and I zoom my camera out. You see how it looks like there's more mist where my, ca my character is? That's because my camera is showing all the mist between my camera and the character. Whereas if I go back here, you can clearly see that there's not mist around my character. So your camera plays a large role in how much the mist blocks your visibility. And if you go into first person, you can actually see further through the mist. When you're running, it sort of clears away a little bit in front of you. Whereas if you're going backwards, you don't see the clearing effect at all. As you can see, if I keep my camera out, it looks like I can't see anything through the mist. But if you zoom into first person, you'll notice that the mist actually clears right in front of you and around your character. So you can explore the Mistlands without a lantern. And this has some interesting benefits because you won't attract anywhere near as much attention if you do it this way. Monsters will still hear you, but the monsters are also, for the most part, blinded by the mist. And because you aren't making a big mist-free area around your character, it's also quite easy to lose monsters in the mist. Being in the Mistlands without a wisp light actually makes the Mistlands like this whole other stealthy experience, and I totally recommend that you check it out. Now, we've been uh, inordinately lucky just because we haven't gotten attacked by something, and that is something that seems to happen in the Mistlands. I don't know what to tell you, but there seem to be these periods of peace where it seems fine and you think you can build things and everything's going to be great, but then... It's not that peaceful most of the time, so so don't think just because you can visit a place that is going to be peaceful like that all the time. Uh, just explore, try and go with the wind, and you'll be able to get a glimpse of the Mistlands and explore it a little bit and expose yourself to it, and that's going to make it even more fun when you do eventually get the gear to actually fight the monsters. That's it for this video. If you enjoy this kind of content, then please comment below. Let me know anything else you want to learn about in Valheim. And most people playing Valheim, especially now that Xbox has Valheim, 
are brand new into the game. So I understand this and I really want to make content for you guys, whoever you are. Just let me know and let me know the limits of it too. Because I know some of you, you don't want to see all of the details of what's later in the game. You want to just see how to do something that you want to do right now without having the mystery of the game spoiled for you. And I totally understand that. I just love making these Valheim videos. It's such a fulfilling way to play video games. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you want to support my work, then please consider renting your own Valheim dedicated server. This allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff if you're doing it on a PC. You can customize the servers, make custom challenges, all sorts of stuff, and even people on Xbox can join them. You can build and have everything set up using mods so you can do it quickly, but then the people joining, they're limited to all of the regular Valheim limitations. It's really cool. I also have an example of one of these servers. You can check that video out if you want to see what one of these custom servers looks like. Support my work by renting your own dedicated server. You can check out my tutorial all about buying a dedicated server and how to do that if you want. That's another video I have published recently. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.